Welcome to Toffee TV today. I'm joined by Luton Town winger Callum McMahon, I'm big Evertonian. Callum, thanks very much, mate, for uh, for coming on the show. No problem, no problem, mate. But uh, is it a bit strange for you at the moment? Because obviously, um, you know, as like we all are, we're basically socially isolating and social distancing and everything. But it's, it's you know, as a professional footballer, it must be very, very tough for you at the minute with uh, in terms of keeping up with the training and everything. Yeah, definitely. Obviously, it's annoying for uh, everyone at the moment, isn't it? Obviously, being stuck in and that. But just been trying to stay fit, really, and just uh, focus on staying fit to go back and obviously we don't know when we're going to be back in but it's a bit frustrating but um, hopefully a few weeks or maybe a month or so we'll be back back into it I suppose you're just like everybody else not, just not being told anything at the minute because obviously the, the government guidelines you know are not, are not uh, we're not getting to a point with this pandemic where they can say right we can probably start you know doing things again so as a as a footballer have you not been given like downtime, because what I mean by that is Blackburn. Seen Blackburn yeah. last week. They basically decided to end their season and give their players three weeks off. Uh, uh, is that happening, yeah. Luke? Or are you just trying to keep yourself ticking over? Yeah, it has actually. Yeah, so the last week and the week before, they said you can do a bit of work if you want, but kind of use it as like light, light session type of thing. And then okay. this week, start from today, we're up to up it a little bit again. So we, oh, right. we had like a tough session today and then it's like a normal week now for the next week or two and then I think we've got another week then that's a light week so the third week so but the the, the clubs are kind of guessing as well when we're going to be back in because obviously no one knows do they so No it's, a, it's, it's, it is, it's such a weird situation and obviously none of us have experienced it, anything like this before have we it is mad with not having kind of like an end date exactly yeah yeah, it's it's all a bit it's all a bit strange. Um but yeah. let's let's talk a little bit. We'll come back to, to now when we'll come back to Luton and we'll come back to your career and all that. Yeah. But still a big Evertonian. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, still get to a few games when I can. I've gone to um, the West Ham game to see the away one and oh, yeah. the Arsenal away one because obviously it was down in London. Um, yeah. we'll still go with the games when I can, yeah. Definitely got me Family's big Evertonian, so um, and half my mates are so it's a big part of my life. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't know whether I've forgiven you yet. Still, seven years later for that uh, for that FA Cup goal at Goodison, but um, I knew that was coming. We'll, we'll, <laughs> we will we will come on to that. Um, yeah. So, in terms of growing up, just the family like you just said, their family of Evertonian. So, who was like your first Everton yeah. hero growing up? Um. Big dunk, definitely. Was it? Definitely. Dunk, yeah. When I was growing up, I had him on the back of all my tops. And, um, <laughs> yeah, I'd definitely say big dunk, yeah. Yeah. I know. It's it's weird, then, I suppose, for like when you're a, it's, it, when you become a player like yourself. It's just, what I mean, what's it like when you, certainly when you played against Everton? Is it strange or is it just another game or is it obviously if you make the um, blues as well? Is it a tough one or, or do you just get into that? That zone. Um, I thought it's, it's never left me to be honest. Most players are like, oh, "Why do you care so much about everything and that?" And I'm like, "I've always been like, it doesn't change like everything around me. It's my family, my family, my mates and that." So, I've, I've most most ninety five percent of players are like, um, they're not bothered about. They have the team they support and the kid, but they're not that bothered. Was yeah, I, yeah. They always wind me up because I, I get too into it. I'm too into it. So when that game come, that Wigan game, obviously I'd, I'd come through the academy at Everton. So that was a massive game for me, that. So I yeah. was like, I was proper up for that game. But I was the most nervous I've ever been. I felt sick yeah. before the game and that. And it was just, it was just mad. I felt sick after it, to be fair. Well, I felt sick <laughs> too, it? To be fair, after about half an hour. Um <laughs> let's talk. Let's let's talk about your career. Then you've just mentioned it. Then obviously you started off at Everton's academy um, when you were a kid. So how did that come about? You just did you see you playing and just get invited down. Sorry, you went you went went off then a little bit. Did it go off? Saying? Sorry, I'm just saying you started at Everton's academy when you were a kid. So did you just get invited there 
or did yeah. they see you playing? Um, yeah, no, I got, I got, I was doing, um, where was I now? I was in Prescott Leisure Centre and there was an Everton coach, do you know what his name was? And yeah. I only had one session and he said, he said, come down and um, come down to Belfield at the time it was. And I was, I was only six and then that was it. I was there till, I was there till I was 15, six till I was 15. And when I got let go, it killed me. Like I was a bit bitter about it, to be honest. But now looking back, it's the best thing that ever happened to me. But at the time, I was devastated because I'd obviously yeah. came through for that long and it was like a big part of my life and that. But I had some great times coming through and travelled mo- around most of Europe playing in tournaments and everything. They had a good side as well. So good memories to look back on now. But as I say, when I, when it did get released at the time, when I was 15, just before the scholarship, I was a bit bitter, to be honest. Took it, I took it hard. Who, who was uh, who was in the youth team or who was who were you playing with? Anyone else go on and make it from them teams? Yeah, Jack Rodwell was in my my age. Oh, was he? Um, yeah. Jack all the way up, and then uh, yeah, and then Adam Forshaw the year below. Um, I think there's there's only Jack there's only Jack and me of our age that um, played at the highest level, like. But um, it was a good a good side at the time. Yeah, well, you know when you when you were released because obviously it's it's the the worst thing ever, isn't it? You know, especially for your your boy or club. Yeah, um, I've been there as well. Um, it's how did you how did you channel that? Like, did you because it can make a lot of people like crumble kind of thing. I I couldn't get over it for about eighteen months to be <laughs> honest with you. It wrecked me. But people like yourself yeah. able to just like did you just decided you had to work harder or did it give you that desire to prove them wrong? No, it, it, it definitely, I think it's make or break, isn't it? I think mm. I had a few months where I, was, I didn't know what to do myself. I wasn't going to school. My head was gone. I didn't know what to do because it was just all I'd ever done. I was hardly going to school because I was training with Everton twice, three times a week with mm. the youth team when I was 15. So I was thinking... I'm on course, you know what I mean? I was promised that it was, I'd get kept on type of thing. So when it happened, it was a big shock. And then I had a, I had a few months of not knowing what was going on. And then it was in the January, just after Christmas. And then Everton got in touch with Wigan. And then I had a trial at Wigan. And I turned up there in all my Everton gear and didn't look back then ever since. I think that kind of, I went there and I was, I was the best player, like I was when I was younger. So, it was a big confidence boost, whereas at Everton, everyone had gone past me because they were bigger and more developed, and I was only small. Then when I gone to Wigan, they were in the academy at the time. They were a school of excellence. So I've gone there, and they got me confidence back, and then that was it. Then I didn't look back. So it was definitely the best thing that happened to me at the time. I couldn't see it. Yeah. It's, I mean, as a kid, it's, your world falls apart, don't you? You should be seen. Loads yeah. of, uh, uh, you know, you see loads of play. You'll have seen lads who you thought, oh, he's got a chance of making it, and they're released, yeah. and they, you, they don't play football again, and or they don't really get to where the yeah. potent, you know, maybe where the potential is. It's such a tough thing. Uh, so, what was that like? Was that a was it was it a culture shock? Would you say going to Wigan from Everton? Because obviously we know how what the facilities are like at Everton. Was it a culture shock going to Wigan, yeah. or yeah. or was it just the footy Definitely, still yeah. that just like, carried you through? And obviously, they were a school of excellence at the time, and Everton was an academy. We'd had everything done for us and looked after them. We had all the best gear and just the little things you took for granted. You've gone there and you're training on like a. You take it for granted, but it kind of. You give, you the bit, give me a bit more fight, I think. So I had to. Was playing against players who were just smashing you. They were in academy players, you know what I mean? And I had to. Uh, that's what, I think that's where my aggression came from because when I was younger I weren't like that but mm. then as I got I, I got a bit more aggressive as I came through and I never had that when I was a kid I never tackled so I definitely came from somewhere around that, that age Yeah, you've got to, you've got to kind of I suppose you've got to stand up, haven't you, and be counted there, especially if you're a, if you're not yeah. physically a big lad. You've got to learn to look after yourself. We'll, we'll come on to yeah. your tackling yeah. in a bit, or well, maybe one tackle 
that I'm sure uh, we won't go over it too much, but one one tackle that wasn't great. Yeah. Um, well, you made you went on made your debut <laughs> in 2009 against Portsmouth, and in doing so became yeah. Wigan's youngest ever player to play in the Premier League. So yeah. that must have been a proud moment for you. Yeah, that was massive. Yeah, I think Steve Bruce was the manager at the time. Um, I just I'd been doing well in training. I'd only just started training with the first team, and then um, we were winning one nil. I think we, we were safe mid table. It was a good side actually. We had, and um, he's put me on for the last twenty years. That was that was a that was a big day. But it kind of I would have liked more people to be there because it was kind of I didn't know it was coming. I had yeah. my family there and a few mates, but not as my career went on. I had a big following, so for that day there wasn't as many as I would have liked there. But it's because it wasn't guaranteed that I was going to be in the squad. Never mind, get on. Mm. You know, it was a great it. day, yeah. Yeah, throwing throwing things at you last minute, one of one of them keeps you less nervous, I suppose. But yeah. but then for the other side of it, obviously, yeah, if you've got family, yeah. you want there. It's different. What was it? I mean, obviously, you made your debut there and youngest ever player and all that. So that comes with a little bit of hype as well. But then it was I was reading it was like eighteen yeah. months before you played again in the first team. Was it difficult for you yeah. the next season to get like your head round the fact that or did you just take it part of your education? Because you've come on and made your debut in the Premier League and then I think I was reading the whole of the yeah. next season you weren't involved in the first team. So was that was it yeah. difficult to almost that take that tough. step back? Yeah, that was very tough, that that I remember thinking, cause I kinda of, I wouldn't say took me foot off the gas, but once I got me chance there to come on, done well, and then I just thought that was it. Then I'm I'm in the first team now, and then that was the last game of the season. Went on holiday, went a bit mad on my holidays, ends up getting glands of fever, and I was out for three months, missed pre-season, couldn't run, was knackered. So Martinez had just came in that summer, and then I didn't get a look, and then I was back in the reserves. He, he came over to me and said, "Listen, you'll get your chance. You just need to build." Your fitness, your stamina back up, and because I was, I hadn't been well. Yeah. So obviously I was and dead wrong because I missed pre-season, and it took a while to get back involved. So I felt like I had to do it all again for the new manager. Well, I basically did. So I had to mm. do it. So then he had another eighteen months. I had to prove then to the at the time um, that I was good enough. And eventually, I got me chance. Yeah, seeing you, you came on as a sub against Arsenal in the League Cup, and then. A few months later, scored your first goal for Wigan against Hull in the FA Cup, and then it, then went out on loan to Blackpool. Yeah. I'd seen for for a few months. What was that like going out on loan again? Was it a little bit? Was there a pathway then? Did you feel like there was a pathway? There was like an idea of what you were gonna do, or were you a little bit like I've just scored in the FA Cup? Why am I going out on loan? Or or do you know what I mean? Or was the, yeah, did you no, take the loan I, I thing? I wasn't happy at the time. Yeah, I wasn't happy at the time. No, I. I thought I should have been playing, so I was I wasn't happy. But he, he was saying, "Listen, go and prove yourself in the championship." Blackburn, Blackpool were a good side at the time, and they go and prove yourself, come back. And um, so I went there. I loved it from the first minute. I enjoyed it, done well. And then to be fair, stuck to his word. I got ended up getting the team not long after and got more involved. But I, I feel like I got more respect after that because obviously they knew I could do it in the championship. So it kind of give instead of playing reserve team football and in training, it was like he's playing a man's game now in the championship. That was the kind of bit that swayed it. I came back and I felt like I was getting more respect. It shouldn't really be like that, but it, it was. I felt like I was getting treated not like a young lad anymore. Do you know what I mean? Mm. I think we see, I mean, just like, like an Everton perspective of that, we've seen it with like Seamus Coleman, who funnily enough went to Blackpool as well and he went on loan. Um, yeah. Probably, yeah, he'd been on loan, then come back and he was looked at differently. And it happens, doesn't it? You're right. Uh, Leon Osman, yeah. another another Everton, like, had gone on loan to Carlisle and Derby. And when they come back, they're almost viewed differently. Yeah. And, and that, was your ex- that was your experience of it as well, of like, oh, he's a man now, as opposed yeah, to like definitely. this this prospect, yeah. It does. It it definitely does help a loan move. But as I say, I was lucky that I got a good club and a good team at the time because it can go the other way. If you pick mm. if you pick a bad loan move, which uh, most players have done, it, you struggle. You don't play for six months or a year because you're not signed to that club and it's tough. But um, Ian Holloway was a 
great manager. He was good with me, and we played attacking football, and we were beating most sides. So I really enjoyed my time there. It definitely helped get breakthrough at Wigan. And then obviously, 2013 is the is the was the big year, wasn't it for you? The big, where you know proper like. Yeah. Breakthrough season for you, if you like. I know you had bits and pieces, and you had done well in that. But you know, I remember you. I remember you scoring against Huddersfield for Wigan. I think it was on the sure it was on yeah. the telly, or and you scored a, a you scored a yeah. cracking little goal in that. And that was the game before Everton, wasn't it? That the that was the fifth yeah, round, yeah, I think. Yeah. So when when the draw is made and it's Everton at Goodison, oh, what, yeah, are it's what are you thinking? What well, are you thinking? I got man the last game, so we had an interview after the game, and he said, "Do you, you, you?" I said, "But this is before the draw come out." I don't. I said it in an interview, and I've I've got in the shower ten minutes later, and the lads have come running in. Everton at Goodison couldn't believe it. Thought they were winding me up, and then the nerves started. Then I started panicking. All my family, me mates are buzzing, and then um, that was it. Really, that was obviously the next round, wasn't it? So just I mean, I, know I was made up when he hit that. From our from our perspective of like wigging at home in the quarter final, we think because Moyes had yeah. a good side then you'll as you'll well know, and we're thinking yeah. opportunity for mm-hmm. Wembley here, you know Wigan yeah. done well but we're playing quite well you know got a good side, and um, that day was just it was biz- it was a bizarre game to watch. Obviously your experience yeah. will be massively different, but. From a from a fan's perspective, watching that game, it was berserk because, like the first twenty five minutes, I Everton we thought we'd done all right, and then we were then probably in control of the game, yeah. and then three minutes later we were three 0 down. <laughs> it was it was, oh, it, was it was mad, it was wasn't mad. it? But I mean, we couldn't believe it either. Yeah, I mean, you took your goal. Phil Neville's gave you the great pass, though, Callum. Let's be honest, the lovely defence splitting ball yeah. by Phil Neville. And what are you thinking? Because you're yeah. running at this time, it was quite quick still. There, yeah. I mean, you're yeah. obviously yeah. quick, but to be fair, I, 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 when people ask me, like, speak to me mates and that about that goal and that game and stuff, I always say that the tactics, our tactics for that day, Roberto's tactics, that Phil Neville pass, them tactics were waiting for that to happen. Right. I had to me and I think it was Coney had to leave the. Everton back four with the ball until a certain point and then we, we worked in training on that had stuff like that happening and then the breakthrough and that's where the second goal comes from them tactics so I always say he deserves credit for massively for that game because we, we, yeah. we changed our tactic completely for that Everton side like we respected that team yeah you know what I mean um, and then obviously I was I, I look, looking back at that goal when I see it now. I think I'm not that quick now. I was fast there, so I don't know. It's a mad one. Great. I mean, it was a lovely finish into that, that far corner. You you said before like about the anger. You're the angriest man ever. When I've been looking back at your goals, you you've got a cob on every time you score. I know. It should, no, it should I, be over to you. I can't I can't smile on that when I'm playing. I don't know why. I'm just. <laughs> I have to, have to be switched on, so I feel like I have to be angry and aggressive to get the best out of me. Like, Graham Jones, our manager now, always says stuff to kind of wind me up and get the best out of me because he knows he says you're better when you're angry. So he says stuff to, to piss me off before he puts me on or play. So I just see it works. So I don't know, I've just always been like that. I think it's a, I think it's like a, um, a scout's mercy side kind of thing, isn't it? Because obviously you see like Wayne Dooney, he's always had a cop on. You know, play, players from your, you know, your neck of the woods, like Steven Gerrard and Gerard, um, yeah. Joey Barton and people like that of all, you know, that, that anger, like that, you know. Yeah. Even Tony Ibbett, who's the quietest fella ever, loved the 50-50, yeah. he, he always looked like he had a cob on. Yeah. yeah, so yeah. It, maybe it's just that that kind of maybe, yeah. how we play football in this neck of the woods, maybe. Well, yeah. But um, obviously that that was an incredible day for you, beating us 3-0, not, not so much for us. Um what was it like afterwards? What were you, what were your family like? Because obviously Everton, massive Evertonians missing out on. Because uh, be honest, that season was like we could win the FA Cup here with this side. And looking at our, yeah, definitely. You know, so what definitely. was it like we afterwards? Were, um, afterwards was mad. So I've come out. All my mates were in the Wigan end, 
half blue, half red, and then a few fizzles around the stadium, same with yeah. family. And I've come out the stadium, and I'm walking with me rucksack just on my own. And I've looked around the corner, I've got to the Gladys seat, and this is when everyone's gone. And all my mates have come running down the Gladys seat, about 10 of them, and jumped on me. And it was just like one of them days, you're just like, what's just happened there? And then um, we've all just gone straight to the pub and just went to local, and just everyone was there, my family had a big party. And like, there was a few of my mates were still a bit, they were made up for me, but they were gutted. Yeah, of course. Because um, it was that that type of day, but my family and that, like my dad, my dad's a massive Evertonian. All my family is, and they were all just they were all just made up for me. And obviously we were going to Wembley, so it's just like surreal, really. It was yeah. mad at the time. And then you go in there, you go and do it in the next round as well. You scored at Wembley in the semi, didn't you? Against the uh, Millwall. Yeah. Millwall, yeah, yeah, Millwall, yeah. Um, no, I do that. I enjoyed that game. That was. Um, we had most of the ball and we dominated yeah. like we were expected to win that game. So it was different to the Everton one. The Everton one, yeah. we weren't really expected to get anything. So it was like a, a, a the Millwall game was more, we were expected, we had the ball. Yeah. It was a bit more pressure, I'd say. We had a lot more pressure, in fact. So when we got over that line, it was like, wow. And then obviously Relief. the final, you know, we were just kind of going out and enjoying it, just go for it type of thing. Yeah. It was it was a weird season for you, that wasn't it? Because obviously you had the FA Cup run, and you were you were brilliant yeah. in that. But I remember you scoring. I'm sure it was against Spurs. You scored an absolute Spurs, corker yeah. of a goal with your left foot. When it was an absolute yeah. streamer. Yeah, and that was. The, that was I think she must be four. It was a, a yeah, absolutely so, brilliant. Goal. We went down that, that season, so it was it was mm. a strange one. But don't get me wrong. I'm, 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 wouldn't change it for the world. Like, yeah, it's better. We we would rather win the cup than stay up. And Wigan fans will still say that now. Obviously, it'd be different for Everton because if Everton went down, it'd be yeah, yeah, terrible, wouldn't it? But yeah. at that time, obviously, we were gutted. We went down. It did take the shine off it a little bit. But then, when you look back now, not many people can say it and enjoy it. So you won it. Just appreciate it, like yeah, you've won a trophy and then. Us as Evertonians, we haven't won a trophy for 25 years, have we? So it, it, it is one of them. Yeah. You mentioned something before. I've got to ask you about the tackle, Callum, against Hyde Era for yeah. Newcastle. Got to ask you just very briefly mm-hmm. about it. Wasn't yeah. You said you couldn't really tackle, and that, that challenge kind of proved it, didn't it? It, was, it wasn't the greatest tackle, mate, was it? Oh, no. That was, that was me putting my debut on as well. So yeah. but, uh, it wasn't ideal, but... Um, in the reserves basically coming through he used to get away with murder really thinking back I used to cut people in half every game and uh, the staff like they they not never encouraged it but they liked the way I was aggressive and because I was a winger it was quite rare it stood out at times you know what I mean did they like the way I was like that so I just carried on doing what I was doing when I got my chance but I've gone into win the ball. I've not gone. Oh, I'm gonna do him type of thing. And yeah, like, yeah. At the time, I didn't think anything of it, which is mad looking back. Um, I didn't think anything of it, and then yeah. at half time, I John Carvers came up to me and started pushing me, and I thought, "Why is he doing that?" And then after the game, I was like, "They were saying to me, you can't, you can't go on Twitter. You're getting death threats and everything." And I was like, "What?" Oh, because it was live on Sky. Yeah, and yeah. It, was, it was mad. And he went, like, "Don't be putting anything on Twitter. Stay off social yeah, media. Yeah. Um, this, this, and this." And I was like, and then I seen it back, and then everyone was talking about it. And then it was an international break, so it went on for two weeks on Sky yeah, Sports yeah. News constantly. And then they ended up changing the rule because of it. But as I say, I never, I never no, not intentional. Yeah. You know, so, I'm not meant we, to. I'm not meant to hate him. But he only had no. a bruised leg in the end. He made out he broke his leg, which made me look ten times worse. Yeah, yeah. But let's let's get to um, happier times. Wasn't a great tackle. Let's leave it there. Uh, but obviously, oh. you just mentioned that then Man City at Wembley, the one of the greatest sides. You know, unbelievable football and ability. I remember watching watching mm-hmm. the game and. It was you had an absolute stormer in that. To be fair, you should have scored though. I've got to say that, Carl. Looking back, you had a good chance in the first half, but no, you you were brilliant. Yeah. And and Joel was in goal, wasn't he? Wasn't Joel in goal? Yeah, Joel was in goal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, Joe, yeah, Joe. Yeah, yeah. and he, he was he brilliant that day, day wasn't he? Kept us in it, yeah. Yeah, but, he was. but what, I mean, what a result. And do you think that the timing of the, the header by Watson was was like perfect for in the perfect way yeah. to win it? What I mean by that is, had he scored after maybe half an hour, it might have it might have been a little bit of a yeah. different game, but the timing of the goal was incredible, wasn't it? Yeah, no, it was, it was perfect. I don't think, as, as the game went on, we got, obviously got a little bit more confidence yeah. and started playing a little bit better, but I watched it back the other day because it came on the Facebook live thing. It's the first time I've seen it, and I couldn't nice. believe how well we kept the ball and had the ball in their half and that. But yeah. um, as I say, I don't remember thinking, until the end, we can do this. And then when they've gone to 10 men, I think after that we were like, maybe we can do it, but we weren't creating anything. We were playing mm. all right, but we weren't creating anything. And then obviously the corner comes, and then the goal was, as you say, perfect timing. But I was just made up, didn't go to extra time, because <laughs> we were all knackered. So when it went in, we knew we'd won. So it was just, that was just carnage, it was madness. Unbelievable, but, um, I mean, unbelievable, just, wasn't it? Unbelievable shock. Yeah. Yeah, it was definitely one of the biggest shocks and probably a big up history in it, really. Yeah. Oh, definitely. I mean, Especially what the I... money they spend. Yeah, well, exactly, exactly. And then obviously, Roberto Martinez went off to Everton then that summer, didn't he? We're gonna got relegated. Yeah. He went to Everton. What did? What kind of happened for you at that stage then? Because you just won man of the match in an FA Cup final. You'd won the cup. You'd score big goals on the way to the cup. You're doing well in the league. What? I'll be honest. We were having a chat the other day. Um, me and Ped and someone, we do like a live show every day and someone asked us a question of players you thought would end up at Everton and your name yeah. come up, your name yeah. come back up as like, because at that time you were this fiery, quick winger, yeah. scored goals, you'd obviously done well against us, we then had Roberto Martinez, so you're, a lot of people at that time are thinking we'll defo go for McManaman, definitely, yeah. because you know Martinez has had them. So, from your perspective, was was it was it ever close? Was it, or did you ever hear about the possibility of coming mm-hmm. to Everton? Um, do we, obviously, everyone was asking me that at the time. There was definitely rumours, but um, I just just before the last game of the season, the day we went down against Arsenal, it was two, three days after the final. Yeah, yeah. Um, we were called up for the twenty ones, and in the morning, and then in the night, I snapped my ankle on the Tuesday night. So I was out for three months and then obviously that was the second to last game of the season. So I missed, I was in the summer and missed all the pre-season and obviously Martinez has gone to Everton in the summer. Mm. So we had an ankle in, bad ankle injury at the time and then you look at the wingers Everton had at the time as well. He had Morales and, and he was flying at the time, weren't he? And yeah, yeah. I was obviously, I was obviously hopeful it was gonna, that was going to come up at the time but... Um, there was no, there was no contact made or nothing to be honest, mm. but they were always kind of like I bumped into Graham Jones not long after it, and he was kind of like keep up when I was I was flying afterwards not long after, and he was saying keep up keep going the way you're going and you never know like hinting that, that it, might it could happen, happen. Ne- never yeah. know, so that was always the aim to be honest, yeah, and it never really it never really materialised obviously and then. I've ended up moving to West Brom. It didn't kind of work out, and it's definitely, definitely held me back. Yeah, in the I was going to say, I was going to say because you went to West Brom for just under five million quid, I think, didn't you? And yeah. back in the Premier League, and I think everyone was thinking. I remember seeing you play against Chelsea. It might have been. I'm sure, it was, I'm sure yeah. it was on live, and you got you yeah. won a penalty, and um, I think you had an assist, and I think you almost scored as well. And you mm. had a you had a great game, and it was like right, he's, you know, we back back at it and all that. So what what kind of happened at West Brom? Because I think within twelve months you'd you'd gone out on loan again, didn't you? Yeah, um, no, it was tough. That was definitely the toughest time of my career. That um, right. Uh, the, um, so after that Chelsea game, I was on the bench the next week, and I was flying. So I was just like, what what have I got to do here? And then I had a fallout with the manager, and then. Right. It just spiralled, and then I've gone from then was on the bench this the season coming on, and even when I was doing well coming on, I, I wouldn't get a start. And then the next season, I've ended up I'm out the squad, and then I've ended up going on loan to Chef Wed halfway through that season, and like I, I was stuck, I couldn't get out. Yeah. 
so I wanted to either play there or where else. So I was just in a in a rust really, and I couldn't get out. So I couldn't uh, I didn't see a way out of it type of thing. And then eventually, um, after the my contract kind of expired near the end, it's what I what I needed in the end because obviously I, I wasn't going to play under that manager, play a completely different style type of thing. So. Um, no, it was frustrating. It was. It was tough to come back from that, to be honest, because it was like three years of your career, um, like held back. Yeah. It was definitely, definitely affected me massively. Frust. That's grim. You went to Sunderland, and I've seen this in the documentary. Yeah. <laughs> so obviously, you know, Sunderland till I die. That the other series has just finished now, and it's very much yeah. what people are talking about. What was? What was that like to be a player while that was going on? And I, I, listen, I don't expect you to come out with revelations about Sunderland. We all seen it, so you don't really have to say yeah. much about it. But what was it like with having a, a Netflix team following, following everything round? And did it? Um, did it? Was it weird? Uh, did it get I in the way? It. Did you? I I hated it. We had like cameras in the the uh, in the on the. They'd be like on the floor in the physio room, like everywhere, like little tiny cameras and speakers and that. And like every morning, me and a few of the lads used to try and turn the speakers off and the cameras off because it was just like constantly getting watched. Like yeah. I hated it, so I, yeah. I, I wanted to be on that as least as less as I could, to be honest. Yeah. Um, we just want to concentrate on on footy. You don't want to be constantly getting watched and everything you're doing and like. You can use what they want to their advantage. So, oh, like, sure. you look at when you watch the documentary and that's, but I've watched both of them. They're, it's mm. good. It's a good watch, isn't it, for people? But when you're actually yeah. in it, if they don't like you or want to stitch you up, then they can. Yeah. Which kind of happened, didn't it? Yeah. It, it, it is weird, isn't it? Club. It's weird because Sunderland are a big club and well supported. And it, it is, they've that's obviously the club, yeah. made. Obviously made mistakes, haven't they, with certain things, and they've been unlucky the way things have dropped with other with other things. We've just seen in this latest one, yeah. you know. Well, I suppose as fans, what's really fascinating is things like transfer deadline days and and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, it, it, that's obviously interesting and definitely. seeing. I don't expect you to comment on this, but the the Will Grigg thing in the last one is just to me was just okay. mad. Where you've got a manager going. Don't pay more than that for him. You've got an owner thinking we need to get up though, and and he yeah. might be the so and and we know that that goes on in football sometimes. Owners yeah. want want players more than managers do, don't they? But um, yeah. it, it, but like you said, it's a fascinating watch, isn't it? No, it's a great watch to be fair. But when you're actually there every day, and yeah, I just felt paranoid all the time <laughs> yeah. about what was getting said and what was what was happening type of thing, but. I just I'm dying for them to get back, get yeah. back in the Premier League. To be honest, I'm just like well, even when I watch it, I get like a bit sad. Think and like they've had some terrible luck, haven't they? Like I just I don't know. I just want them to do well. Did you enjoy your time and, um, there? Hopefully, um, not really because obviously we're struggling. But I love living yeah. down there and I love the people and that. The yeah, yeah, that's what I meant. Brilliant. Yeah, yeah. Obviously, obviously we we were struggling at the time. It didn't end up the best season, but. I love living down there and uh, up there, sorry, and the people and that were brilliant with me. So I just hopefully they get back to the, where they yeah. belong. It's a, it's a good club. The facilities and that unbelievable. Yeah. Best I've been at. Brilliant, um, brilliant. So how come you re- yeah. returned back to Wigan, didn't you? You went back there in in 2018. Um, yeah. For a year. How did that come about? Just Sunder it was. As a result of like what we've seen in the documentary, were they just looking to get players off the wage bill and stuff and, and try yeah, to cut costs? Kind yeah. Of, yeah, they both, yeah. They wanted players off the, the wage bill. They were lowering in the wage bill and stuff. And I'd never played in League One at the time. So, right, obviously, yeah. when Wigan come in, I've obviously got a great uh, connection with the fans there. And I, I, yeah. I loved it there. So, I was desperate to get back, to be honest. But... Yeah. Um, I wish it would have been a bit different at Sunderland. Obviously, we, if we stayed up, we could have built something and maybe yeah, started yeah. again, even though it would have been a bad season. We, if we stayed up, maybe. So I had a two-year deal at the time, so hopefully it could have been a lot different. But when Wigan came up, and obviously was in League One, they they wanted people off the wage bill anyway. Yeah. Um, it was a no-brainer, really. Hmm. And then, obviously, you've had 14 games and one goal in it for Wigan and then moved to Luton. I mean, how's that? 
how did that come up? The Luton move then is that Graham because obviously Graham Jones is the manager yeah. former Everton the assistant manager and obviously you'd worked them at Wigan as well. So yeah. did he just come in and, and want to take you to Luton? Yeah, so as soon as he got the job, basically he rang me and I, I met up with him. And then as soon as I spoke to him, he was he was bringing up games from years earlier, games at Sunderland, games for Wigan, and I would like telling me what I did in this minute and mad stuff like that. And I was I couldn't believe that like, you remember it yourself, but you don't think everyone else does type of thing. Yeah, it was like yeah. you're in the wrong position here, playing the wrong position. You're too deep about games from years ago I was impressed by that so as soon yeah. as he said he, he wanted to get it done that was it really I, I was his first signing so yeah so I've got a good relationship with um, Graham Jones definitely and you're doing well you know obviously till the season stopped 20 games 3 goals so most productive mm. goals since for a few years you seem as though you you settled at Luton and doing, doing quite well so you're enjoying it there <clears throat> yeah no I'm enjoying it yeah it's, I've not, uh, I've not been playing of recent. I've just been coming on, which is a bit frustrating because mm. I end up turning into like a bit of an impact player now, which nice. I want to prove that I'm not. But every time I've gone on the team and had a few games, I pick up a niggle or we don't get the results. So I just need to try and get back on the side and get it on going. But yeah, I'm, I'm enjoying it a lot more now. I feel a big part of the squad type of thing. I've scored a few, so hopefully we can stay up now. But obviously we don't know what's going to happen if we're going to be even going back in or with the season and I don't know I don't know what's going to happen I mean what do you, what do you think will happen because obviously we can and I know you're probably exactly the same as us mate in terms of I haven't got a clue but like me and me and Ped have done this a lot of like you're trying to second guess every decision but with things like there seems to be a real appetite for the Premier League to be played these nine games yeah obviously for oh. monetary reasons but then it affects everything doesn't it the championship which is just what you're in, and exactly, yeah. you know, and things like that. So I, I, think, I, uh, I was just going to say, I yeah, don't I see think. how they can not play. They can only play the Premier League when you've got relegation and promotion from yeah. the Championship, unless they just said, right, no one's getting relegated, no one's getting promoted, or it, it, it's all. Or do you think it'll just all be behind closed doors, which will be a mad one again, won't it? Yeah, well, we've kind of been told it's either going to be behind closed doors, probably, or scrapped so I don't know what's going to happen but yeah. I think if it goes past the 30th of June I just think it's going to get messy me I just think it's going to affect next season and what what's going to go on with contracts like we've got a few players out of contract some, like like the Charlton I've got about loads of players out of contract Nasty. I think and then I don't know I don't know what the Premier League clubs but I don't know what's going to happen with that and then I don't know is it going to be alright to start in the end of June I'm not sure so I think if it goes past a certain point you'd have to say leave it I yeah. think but yeah we'll see it is. well you're right because obviously next summer you've got the Euros the Olympics yeah. like the Copa America for like obviously Premier League players and players around Europe that already the season's getting short and there's a winter break in it as well now which which was never around for for the Premier League as well and so with it, you're right the longer it the longer this goes on then it, you start to wonder forget, if it... we're going to need a pre-season now as well, aren't we? So yeah. we're going to need yeah. three full pre-season because everyone's been in their house for how many weeks? So yeah. we're going to have to do all that again for nine games. So I don't know. It's mad. Jeez. It'd be better for Luton like, if we scrap it because we're in the relegation zone at the moment. So hopefully we'll stay up. <laughs> just stay up <laughs> anyway. Well, what's your, with just on that, Callum, have you... Do you think you'd have to do a pre-season, then play the nine games, and then maybe just have <clears throat> one or two weeks off, and then so and then back weeks. into the next yeah. one? That's the the that's the kind of way it's looking at the moment, isn't it? Like I think we're only gonna get like two weeks, and then they'll probably do transfers and stuff, and then two weeks. Right. I think right, okay. there's no way they can do nine games and then carry on the season the next right. season with no break just got people out of contract and the turnover it'd just be mad wouldn't it so at the moment that looks like what's going to happen but as I say if it goes past the 30th of June then phew, anything could happen couldn't it yeah yeah you're, a, you're absolutely right um, <clears throat> let's just quickly bring you back to Everton then before I let you go on with your afternoon um, what 
obviously big Evertonian. You've said yourself, you know, you go you you go the games when you can and, and all of that kind of stuff. So what yeah. did you make of Carlo Ancelotti appointment then from a from a fan perspective? Yeah, I was made up. I was buzzing. I didn't I didn't think I didn't think at the time when I seen the links and the rumours and stuff. I just kind of thought, oh, it's one of them. But when it when he actually got it, I thought it's a big news because that's what we need. We need a statement. We need to we need to attract big names, big players. I think that's what's that's what tells us back a little bit. So I think obviously this this summer after all this has happened is massive for mm. us. If we can uh, we can get some big names in and get a few big signings in. I think everything's set in place. Yeah, I mean, there's the, there's a there's a good core there, isn't there? You know, you you like to yeah. Charlison and Dominic Calvert Lewin's doing well now, and we've got people, you know, like Mason Holgate as well, and Luca Dean. So there's a there's a good core of players at the club, and if you're right, if we can add two, three, four like top quality players, then it it could change the face of it, couldn't it? Definitely, yeah. Especially with uh, the money now in the background and Marcel Brands, it looks like we're doing everything properly now. So. As I say, when once he got the job, this is the most excited I've been. But he needs the players now as well. He needs he needs four or five good players. You know what I mean? Mm. So hopefully we can get that in the uh, in the summer. Fingers crossed. Let me before I I, I am going to let you go now, mate. Honestly, I promise you. Um, All right. What did you? What was Roberto Martinez like as a manager to work for? Because obviously, from a fan's perspective, we had a great first season and then two. Yeah. Very frustrating seasons of yeah, overplaying. Him. But what was he like for you as a player to work for? I I loved him. I loved the way he played because obviously it was all possession based in football, and I was a big part of that team at the time. So he helped, mm. he helped me massively. <clears throat> um, and obviously the first season with Everton, we were flying. Maybe I think it was fifth, yeah. wasn't it? And um, yeah, yeah. And then after that, it got a bit frustrating. I feel like teams kind of just sussed us out, and they were just getting behind the ball and counter attacking us and that would be the only kind of criticism we didn't I don't think um he kinda of changed mm. enough. He kept playing his he's got his beliefs and he believes that is his way of playing. And yeah. a bit like Pep Guardiola he did he believed that if you're if it's not working then you can do it better. Mm. Which some of the most of the managers would kind of change and he was yeah. stuck to his guns, which sometimes it did work but as it time went on and Everton especially I don't think it did I think kind of got sussed out that, that side even though it was a good side um, but no I was gutted I, I was confident it was going to work out for um, Roberto at Everton especially mm. after the first season so no I was gutted when it didn't work out to be fair yeah but we're, we're here now with Carlo Ancelotti one of the one of yeah. the most successful managers ever so Let's hope that this time, that this time we can we can actually move forward. Listen, I know it's your birthday later this week as well, so very happy birthday. Um, I hope uh, I hope Luton stay up. I hope you score a few more goals, um, less tackling or more tackling, just better tackles. <laughs> but no, listen, Callum. Thanks so much for taking time out. They really, really appreciate it, mate. Been brilliant chatting to you, and if you're ever around this neck of the woods when this thing sorted itself out. We'd love to have you come in the studio and have a, yeah, another uh, chat. No problem, yeah. I'll, I'll come in, yeah. Yeah, oh, top man. No problem. Listen, super, Enjoyed lovely it. to chat to you. All right, mate. See you later. All right, thanks, Callum. Take care, mate. Big thanks there to Callum McManaman, and Luton Town winger and massive Evertonian for taking time out of his day to chat about his career and also Everton. Uh, as he's still a big blue, as he's just said. So make sure you give the video a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't, and if you uh, want more videos, join us over on Patreon. See you later.